Hi everyone, I'm Philip Galinsky, founder and director of Samba New York. In today's lesson, I'm going to be exploring the subject of technique, specifically stick technique. But before we jump into the content of the lesson itself, I just wanted to share with you my definition of technique. So according to me, in my opinion, technique is just the movements and the hand and body positions that we use to create the sounds that we want in our music. Okay, so I believe that there is no one correct technique. This is not about right and wrong. That the, you know all the different techniques are right. It just depends on what you're using them for and if they work for you. So when I teach technique to my students, I generally focus on two considerations to start with. The first consideration is, is the technique comfortable for our body? Is it efficient? Does it cause injury? So ideally we want a technique that is uh, comfortable for the body and that does not cause injury, obviously. And the second consideration is, does the technique help us create the sounds that we want in an efficient way, right? So maybe we can use a certain technique that will create the sound that we want, but it's not very efficient. So we're looking for comfort with the body, efficiency, and creating the sounds that we want. Okay, that, those are the considerations that I start with. Okay, so this is going to be a very short lesson, just focusing on four different hand techniques when using sticks. Okay, so there are a lot of great videos on YouTube about stick technique, and I'm going to share with you um, at least one of them, maybe a few of them in the description, uh, so you can refer to some other sources, but there are plenty of them. So this is really just a distillation of some things that I've learned. I've been playing the drums uh, since the age of three and uh, samba percussion for the last 30 years. So uh, I've been fortunate that the stick technique that I learned when I started taking formal drum set lessons or drum lessons at the age of eight, drum lessons at the age of eight and drum set at the age of 13, starting at age 13, that all of those uh, techniques that I learned and even a lot of the music and rhythms that I learned definitely helped me when I started to learn samba, okay? So again, these are just four basic hand techniques or strokes that uh, we'll be using when we play the kaisha, for example, the samba snare drum. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about grip. So there are two sort of at least two basic ways of holding the sticks. We have what's called traditional grip, which is which comes from when drums were played in a marching band or in a military context. Drums were played on a strap uh, and the dominant hand, the, the drum is tilted towards the dominant hand and the non-dominant hand, instead of having the non-dominant hand play up like this, since the drum is at an angle, drummers would play like this. This is called traditional grip in English, right? And it's the way that drum set players started. Uh, the earliest drum set players played traditional grip, even though the drum set is actually stationary. That, that tradition from a uh, marching context continued. And many drummers even to this day still play traditional grip, However, many drummers play what's called matched grip. I'm talking about drum set players, for example. In the, in the context of the samba schools in Brazil, the caixa can be played below, right? Or it can be played you know, on a strap, or it can be played what's called in cima, which is cradled in the arm here. A couple different ways of doing that, but in any case, uh, playing in cima is a whole different technique. But when the drums played in baixo below on a strap, Typically in the samba schools in Rio, at least the kaisha players tend to play traditional grip or some variation of it because the drum is slanted. In the blocos afro of Bahia, in my understanding, the the kaishas are played with a strap around the waist and they're they're laying flat, so that facilitates the ability to play matched grip. In samba New York, I allow our kaisha players to play whatever grip they feel comfortable with. So if they feel more comfortable with matched grip which is what I'm more used to, at least 
how I started on the drum set and that's how I, I mostly play match grip and that's how I feel most comfortable. But I learned to play traditional grip really for the Kaisha. Um, but I advise you to play whatever grip is most comfortable for you. So if you need to put your Kaisha with a strap around your waist so it's flat and you can play match grip, by all means do that. Of course, all of this is dependent on the particular group or bateria or samba school or blocko that you're playing with. Of course, you can you know check that with your, your director of your group. But in Samba New York, I allow our Kaisha players to play whatever way they feel comfortable, whichever grip. So match grip is obviously just having the same grip for both hands. So I'm, in this lesson, I'm going to focus on match grip, and um, we're gonna we're gonna all of the different strokes we're gonna use match grip. Okay. Now uh, to to help facilitate getting your match grip, what I'd like you to do is just put your arm at your side and bring which is the most comfortable position that your hand could be in and then just bring it up and grab the stick more or less about a third of the way up from the bottom of the stick and hold it that's that's this is my kind of natural grip so i have my thumb on top of the stick i have my index finger below here but really here and it's kind of laying across the second joint here and I have my other fingers loosely wrapped around. Everything is very relaxed and comfortable. I'm not gripping the stick hard. It's very relaxed. Now, there are a couple of different hand positions, at least in classical um, European, in the European cl uh, classical tradition. In my understanding, you have sort of um, a few different hand positions. This is known as German grip, where you have the the back of the hand facing the ceiling or the sky, right, like that. You have French grip where you have the thumb on top, like that. You also have what's known, uh, in my understanding, the, the drummer Gene Krupa um, coined this uh, position as American grip, which is in between the two, in between German and French grip, American grip, which is where the the hand is angled at about a 45 degree angle, like, like so, right? And that's actually the grip that I tend to use. All right? So, of course, it depends on the context, depends on the situation. If I'm playing the tamborine, I'm going to use this grip where the thumb is on top. I'm not going to go like that to play the tamborine. It all depends on the, the context. But generally speaking, when I'm playing a kaisha or I'm playing match grip on a surface like this, I, I would tend to play... Uh, with this quote-unquote American grip. Okay, so that's a little bit about grips. Just use whatever grip is most comfortable for you. And there are a few different things to consider when, when actually striking the drum, playing at a stroke. You're, you're, um, you can use your arm, right? Your forearm, so you, you can pivot at the elbow. You can also, some drummers even bring the whole arm up. That's a whole other thing, which we're not gonna cover here today. But the forearm can sometimes be involved, or is often involved. The wrist is also involved, so pivoting at the wrist. And also the fingers can be involved, right? So there are at least three different muscle groupings involved when playing a stroke, or some combination of those. All right, so we're, I'm just going to go jump into the four different strokes. Before we get into that, though, I should mention the concept of the fulcrum, which is the pivot point. So you want to kind of find where the stick is most likely to, to bounce. So this is a good, piv a little good pivot point here. It's, it bounces a lot when I have my thumb right about here. So find that pivot point, and then often you might have, if you've studied drum set, you might have learned that this is the fulcrum, the thumb and the index finger. Now it could be the fulcrum, the the, the pivot point. You know the the um, uh, how the stick is actually moving up and down. You, but uh, often when I play, I often use the middle finger as the pivot. Really more, you're really piv I'm really pivoting over the middle finger and I'm keeping my whole hand relaxed and I'm keeping a space here between. I'm not, I'm not going like this. So very often if you use the, the fulcrum here with the, the, the index finger, often it's gonna create a lot of tension here and you might even close this gap which creates tension, which you generally don't want. So you want to keep it nice and loose 
and the fulcrum, meaning the stick is gonna, gonna glide over that middle finger when it strikes the, the surface of the drum, all right? So again, this is a, a vast subject and these are just a few little pointers that I particularly personally find helpful. Um, they're just for your consideration. Obviously, you know, feel free to do your own research and do what's, uh, what you feel most comfortable with, all right? So let's get on to the four strokes. The first stroke, we're gonna, I'm gonna use my right hand since I'm right-handed, I'll start with the right hand. The first stroke starts high and it ends high. So this stroke is known under a lot of different names. It can be known as the free stroke or the rebound stroke or the full stroke. I'll call it the full stroke here because it makes it clear that it's a full range of motion. So the way that I uh, like to teach playing the full stroke uh, is that I just, um, I have the stick gripped here, right, very loosely, and it's kind of parallel to my um, body here, and I'm just throwing it down with my wrist, and I'm letting it bounce right back up, just like you would bounce a basketball, right? I'm keeping my fingers kind of loose around it. I'm not, I'm not going like this or like this. I'm keeping all my fingers around it and I'm just letting it bounce and come right back up. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm throwing it down and it's naturally gonna bounce and then I'm just catching it with my fingers on the way back up. So instead of going all wrist, instead of going down up, which uses more or less twice as much energy, I'm conserving energy by letting the stick do the work and just simply catching it on the way back up. So this is the full stroke. So it starts high and ends high. It's generally used for an accented note which will be followed by another accented note, right? Because accented is loud and we're gonna get another loud note from up high here, right? So loud note followed by another loud note, whatever loud note that is, okay? So that's the full stroke. You could do it in the left hand, same thing. Okay, applications, you might play like, um, when you're doing a lot of accented notes, you might go. Right? That's all the rebound stroke or the full stroke, okay? So, very important stroke. The next stroke I wanna teach you is what is known as the down stroke. So, from the full stroke, you can play a down stroke, which is simply using the wrist again to a little bit of the arm, but using the wrist and thrusting the stick down or letting the stick drop. And instead of letting it bounce back up, all I'm doing is I'm catching it just at the moment of impact and I'm leaving a very short rebound, no more than about an inch or a few centimeters, okay? And I'm, I'm just snapping the stick very gently into the palm of my hand. So I'm going from the free stroke or the, or the full stroke, I'm gonna, I, I'll do a, a down stroke. So here we go. And I'm just, I'm just snapping it into place very gently and that's what keeps the stick from going like that and bouncing multiple times. So here's the downstroke. Now, interestingly, the downstroke has to be followed by some sort of upstroke. So either you're already up here and you just do a downstroke or if you're down here and you wanna do a downstroke, it has to be followed by either an audible or an inaudible upstroke. We'll get to that in a second. But in, in any case, we're, we'll start with the full stroke and then we'll do a downstroke, okay, so short rebound. Now we're going to do an upstroke. If we wanted to do an inaudible upstroke, where we're not actually making any sound at all, you could do that by just raising the wrist, or you can introduce what's known as the molar technique, which is this kind of gent gentle whipping motion or serpentine movement where you're pivoting at the wrist as, the, as you're also pivoting at the elbow and coming up. Why would we do that? Well, it allows for us to not put all the pressure just on the wrist. It allows for a, a nice flow and relaxed motion. Imagine if you're in a pool and you're going like this. So the more relaxed you are, the more relaxed your sound is going to be. The more flowing you, you are with your technique, the more flowing your sound is going to be. So I like to employ the molar stroke this kind of gentle whipping motion or serpentine movement for the upstroke if we're going to do another accent after that. Okay, so upstroke, here we go, like that. That's an inaudible. Audible would just be down and then up. 
So just a tap down and then up. So let the stick, so if you're after your downstroke, you can just let the stick drop and then do that molar and come up, all right? So <clears throat> that's, that's the upstroke. But before we actually get to the upstroke, I want to introduce another stroke, which is called the tap stroke. So here we are with our full stroke. That's the first one. Second is a down stroke. Before we actually get to the upstroke, we're going to introduce the tap stroke, which is number three, which is simply tapping the drum. Uh, it's kind of a shorter version of the downstroke. So we're, I'm just using my wrist. I'm keeping the stick not completely. Um, I'm not gripping my stick really tightly, but I'm not letting it super loose. It's, it's somewhat immobile in there. And just tapping it using my wrist. That's a tap stroke. So that the tap stroke is obviously where your uh, is a non-accented note or a, what we sometimes call a ghost note. All right, so a quieter note, okay? And obviously a tap stroke uh, starts low and ends low, all right? So starting again, we have our full stroke, down stroke, tap, and up stroke. Full stroke, sorry, full stroke, down stroke, tap, up stroke. Full stroke, down stroke, tap, up stroke. Full stroke, down stroke, tap, up stroke. All right, we can do the same thing in the left hand. Full stroke, down stroke, tap, up stroke. Full stroke, down stroke, tap, up stroke. All right, so these are just four basic strokes. There are many other techniques that can be used with sticks, of course. I mentioned one of them, the molar, where you're going like this. Um, these Four hand techniques will get you started. And in another video, the next video, I'm going to demonstrate what I consider to be the most basic pattern for samba on the kaisha or samba snare drum. Okay, and uh, that pattern utilizes, um, utilizes these strokes. Okay, or actually utilizes the down stroke, the tap, and the up stroke. Okay, so stay tuned for that in the next video. If you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments. I've, I hope you found this to be useful and informative, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Thanks so much.